This video is part one in the series titled, Knowledge of Science Can Be Useful to a Kung Fu Man. This series of videos is based on the claim that knowledge of science can be useful to a Kung Fu Man. This first video will provide simple definitions of terms and examples of ideas that will be used extensively in the following videos of this series. The phrase Kung Fu Man used in this series of articles will refer to a person engaged in the practice of any type of self-defense, including both hand-to-hand -hand and any type of weapon combat. Knowledge of the areas of science named physics, engineering, and trigonometry will benefit a kung fu man the most. Physics can be defined as the science of matter and its motion. The science of physics is useful to a kung fu man because a human body fits the definition of matter and kung fu fighting involves the motion of the human body. Trigonometry is about the study of triangles and their characteristics. The science of trigonometry is useful to a kung fu man because the construction of the human body is based on and strongly influenced by triangles. Engineering can be simplistically defined as being involved with designing and constructing things and with understanding and explaining the design and construction of things. The science of engineering is useful to a kung fu man because the human body can be treated as a complex machine that is designed and constructed in a specific way. A term that will be used frequently in all of the following articles of this series is the term force. The term force is defined scientifically in physics as anything that can cause a mass to accelerate. What that means in normal language is that one definition of a force is something that can make an object move. Forces are invisible. Because forces are invisible, there needs to be some way that human beings can use to communicate information to each other about these invisible forces. Science uses something called a vector to visually represent invisible forces. An arrow was chosen as the symbol to visually represent a vector. A vector arrow representing a force will point in the direction that the force is going. A vector will have some numbers associated with it that indicate its magnitude or size and its exact direction. Vectors can be used in either two-dimensional or three-dimensional space. This picture shows an example of a two-dimensional vector. This next picture shows an example of a three-dimensional vector. The capital P is the magnitude number of the vector, and the three numbers in parentheses are the direction numbers. Another characteristic of a force is that a force can cause a change in pressure in a three-dimensional object. This property of a force provides a way for an individual to get a personal feeling for what a force is. If you press one of your fingers into the palm of your other hand, the palm of your hand will send sensations of pressure to your brain. That feeling of pressure is caused by the force being exerted by the finger. According to the scientific view of the world, your finger is not exerting pressure on your palm. Even though your eyes see your finger pressing into your palm, and you feel your finger pressing into your palm, and your palm feels your finger pressing into it, according to scientists, your finger is not pressing into your palm. According to the way scientists look at the world, only a force is pressing into your palm. Something invisible that is inside of your finger, a force, is pressing into your palm. The implication of that statement is that the finger could be completely removed from the example. This picture shows a finger pressing into a palm. Because science says the finger is not really pressing into the palm, the finger is removed in this picture. According to science, an invisible force is traveling through the finger to the palm. Vector arrows are used to represent invisible forces, so a vector arrow needs to be added to the picture to indicate the effect that the one hand is having on the palm of the other hand. This picture has a vector arrow coming out of the hand and pointing at the palm. 
The vector arrow points in the same direction of the force traveling through the finger. Why is this complicated sounding discussion of forces useful to a Kung Fu man? The reason is obvious. If the finger pressing into the palm can be described by the science of physics as the application of an invisible force by the finger to the palm, then a fist striking a face or a foot kicking a body could be described as an invisible force striking a face or kicking a body. The next picture shows one man slapping the face of another man. According to science though, the hand is only delivering a force to the face. The hand is not hitting the face. This picture shows the slapping arm removed and replaced by a vector arrow with an arbitrarily chosen magnitude and direction that represents the invisible force delivered by the hand to the face. According to the way that scientists view the world, the hands and feet of a kung fu man do not hit and hurt their opponent. According to the way scientists view the world, the hands and feet are only delivering an invisible force to the opponent. It is the invisible force that does the actual damage. The hand or foot can be visualized as a car that drives the invisible force over to the body of the opponent, drops the invisible force off at the body of the opponent, and then drives away. The invisible force remains where it was dropped off, and that invisible force only hits and damages the body of the opponent. That concludes the presentation of basic ideas and definitions in this first video in the series titled, Knowledge of Science Can Be Useful to a Kung Fu Man. Comprehension of the ideas and definitions presented in this video will be necessary in order to follow the material that will be presented in the remaining videos of this series.